Sometimes people ask why. Why do we do this? When we came up here, I didn't feel capable. Because I was scared. Why do we take our families away from places that are familiar and move to places that are far off? My wife was nine months pregnant and we did not know one person who lived in the city. Why do we come to where there's nothing so we can try and start something? The Lord really just, He broke my heart for this city before I stepped off the plane. Why do we stress and strain and struggle and sweat just to make life better for someone else? There's so many people that are broken, that are lost, and it's heartbreaking. Yes, sometimes people ask why, and when they do, we tell them. There's places where the truth hasn't yet reached. We need to share the gospel and reach out to our community. We tell them there's a God who loves them so much, He sent us. God spoke to us, broke our hearts for the city, and God's call trumps all. And we tell them there are people who love them so much. They give so that we can go. When people give uh, to missions, things happen. New believers are getting baptized. New churches are started. So when people ask why, that's what we tell them. We tell them it's the gospel. It's all about the gospel. In your bulletins uh, this week, there's an insert, and it's all about the gospel, the 2020 prayer guide. Uh, this is the week of prayer, and I know for many of you that are, some of you that know that the, normally the week of prayer is the uh, first week in March, but because Easter was so late this year, what we decided to do was we wanted to, we wanted to focus starting today on the um, uh, prayer for for Easter offering that's coming up. So in your bulletin, there's a prayer guide that we would want you to take home and read over and pray daily for our missionaries. Pray for those who are taking their families and moving off into places unknown uh, to be able to reach people for Jesus Christ. And so we're encouraging you to do that, uh, do that today. And also remind you that on Facebook, starting tomorrow... On our, on our Facebook page, that every morning we're going to have a new video that's going to be played throughout the week that's going to show these people so a little more about them so you can know them a little more intimately and pray for them uh, throughout this week. So please join us on our Facebook page to go and, and watch these videos. I, I promise you it's going to be an encouragement to you. And then, of course, on Easter Sunday, we'll take up the offering for the North American Mission Board, for the missionaries in North America. So thank you in advance for doing that. So we're excited about uh, having that opportunity. Well, today is the last day of the, the, the sock wars, I guess you might want to call it. And so I'm wearing the last pair of socks that were made, and I put these off to the very end, hoping that y'all would forget about them. Uh, but every week somebody says, oh, what socks are next? And so you haven't forgotten about them. So today I'm going to reveal the last pair of socks. You saw them on the videos. But here we are. Now this has kind of been really uncomfortable for me all day long. And you'll see why. The first sock, of course, this is the Texas Longhorn sock. Ah, yeah, yeah, I agree. You ought to be wearing it. It really hurts. And so anyway, we got that one. But then on the other side... We got the OU sock, all right? So not only am I feeling kind of awkward because I got a Texas sock and an OU sock, but actually what really bothers me is one of them is a really long sock that goes all the way up to here. The other one is a little smaller sock that goes all the way down to here, and I am just thrown off balance this whole day. It is just driving me crazy because having one high sock and one low sock, and mm. hey, man. I got a pair of socks in my office, and as soon as I get done, I'm going to get balanced again. Amen? So anyway, thank you for uh, giving to uh, this, this little fundraiser uh, for, 
for missions, and we're excited about that. And so, uh, kids, to all the kids that worked on them, thank you. You did a great job as well. So it's time now for our kids to go ahead and join Miss Carrie in the back for Children's Church. She'll be taking you upstairs. So kindergarten, first, and second graders, you can be dismissed, and we will see you uh, shortly, okay? So it's good to uh, see all these kids still here today. Want to let you know again, remember about Immerse, our Immerse Bible Conference, which is coming up in just a couple of weeks. Uh, you have an opportunity to register for that, so we want to encourage you. Remember, it's going to kick off on Friday night with the revival service, so we want to encourage you to come and be a part of We're going to have a great time that night, worshiping the Lord and, and praying for revival for our church. <clears throat> then on the next morning, on Saturday morning, it's when all of our breakout sessions will be going. We have a great lineup of, of, of what I feel are very informative and encouraging and inspiring breakout sessions with some great teachers that are going to be coming into our church and sharing with you on Saturday morning through, through lunch. And then after lunch, we'll be going home. And then that night, we'll, we'll end it all with a great night of a revival and a church dinner here. So we want you to come and be a part of that. Uh, but if you're going to come on Saturday morning, that's the registration part that we need. So if you'll go online and register, you can register after our service tonight uh, or today and then even tonight. But uh, just a couple more weeks and we'll be having that. And I'm really, really excited. So please be in prayer about that. Be in prayer about you attending. I promise you, it, you will not be disappointed because we have a great, great lineup. Uh, and next week I'll be sharing a message uh, and out of the book of Ephesians about being immersed in the power and the love of God. Amen? So looking forward to that. Today we're going to continue with getting people to Jesus. It's all about the gospel. Amen? That's the call for the North American Mission Board offering. That's the call that God has been calling for us to do. And for the last several weeks I've been sharing messages with you about getting people to Jesus. That's what we're about. I want you to take your Bibles, if you would, and turn to Ephesians chapter 4, starting verse 11 and reading verse 11 and 12. So I want to encourage you to uh, turn there and then stand in honor of reading God's Word with us uh, this morning. The Bible says in verse 11, And he himself, Jesus, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Let's pray. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for allowing us to commit this day to you and to praying, Father, for our nation. And other churches joining in with us as we pray, God, that you would do a great work. And Lord, we pray that as now we step into this part of our service, that God, you would be an encouragement to us. God, as we open up your word, and Lord, I, I share what you've laid on my heart. I pray, God, that we would realize the true purpose of the church. And God, we look forward to what you're going to be doing. And I pray, as always, God, that the words I'm about to say are not going to be my words. Lord, these will be your words. I pray that this is not going to be my message that I'm sharing, but Lord, the message you have. And that, Father, that the re response would be as you desire for it to be. And, Father, it's in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. And be seated. Today, Ephesians chapter 4, 11, 12, getting people to Jesus. The title of my message is Fulfilling Our Purpose. Fulfilling the purpose that God has for First Baptist West. And it begins, I pray, today with a full-scale movement of people reaching the goal that God has for us. And so what I want to look at tonight, today is I want to look at basically three parts. I want to look at our goal, I want to look at our method, and then I want to look at the results. The goal that we have, the method, and then the results. So we see in this text a couple of things. But the one thing I want us to share, before, I want to share with you before we get into the message is this thought. The one struggle that I see of the church is for us to stay focused on what our true purpose is. I shared in the first service this morning that, that I believe that a lot of times the church can have ADD, amen? 
And as someone who knows what that's like, I want you to know sometimes it's not good. Amen. And ADD means that we can jump from one thing to the next. Man, we're focused over here. Some, will, some bright will catch our attention and off we go here. And the next thing over here. And, and so uh, we, we can get this. And as a church, if we're not really careful, we can become ADD. Amen. And we can jump from one thing to the next, just trying all these different things and losing focus on what God truly has for the church. And so we look here and we see then the purpose that God has. So as we stay focused on what the purpose of the church really is, we can become very, very effective. So we need to look at what first is our goal. What is the goal of the church? In other words, what is the purpose that God has? And it's with this, my friends. The purpose and the goal of the church is to reach people for Christ. That's it. That's what we're called to do. That is the crutch of, our, of, of all of our existence. That's the reason we're here. We, we shared with you even a couple of weeks ago that, that it's not God's purpose that we, that we love. That's part of what we do to reach people for Jesus. But he has us as a goal to reach people. If he did not, if it was to only save us so that we could get to heaven, the very moment we received Jesus as our Savior, bam, we would go and be there because our, His purpose has been served for us. Our purpose is now over because it was to be saved. Now listen, it is God's will that all men be saved. Amen? Amen. But His goal is that He uses the church to go and to reach people. Now that is to bring those who are lost to the saving grace of Jesus Christ. That's what it means to reach people for Christ. Is that separation, as I've been sharing with you over and over, that being lost is being separated from God. And so his goal is that we go and we minister to them, and we do all of these different things that we do, but we have it with one goal in mind, and that is to bring those people to that saving grace of Jesus Christ that we all know. Amen? We all have it, and if you have it, then our goal ought to be able to reach people people for Jesus now a couple things though that I think happens to us the first thing that we need to know is that if we get consumed by any other activity or purpose we will then lose our effectiveness if we get distracted off onto something else or any other activities if we get listen if we get activity minded we're going to lose our effectiveness because all we're going to do is do activity 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 and the, now listen, activities are going to be a part of reaching, but our goal, everything that we do is, every activity we do, everything that we have going on at the church is to bring people to Jesus. It's at that point when we truly understand why we're doing what we do that we'll become effective. But if we get distracted and we begin to do all these other things, thinking all oh, this is really important, even if we get distracted by the idea, listen to me, even if we get distracted by the idea of growing our church in number, we're going to lose our effectiveness. Because our purpose is to not grow the church in number. It is to reach people for Jesus. And you say, well now, pastor, isn't that the same thing? No. Do you know a church can grow without reaching people for Jesus? Amen? Amen. I mean, we can put on concerts and shows, and we have a lot of people here. Doesn't mean they're going to be saved. So our purpose, our goal, is to take those who are separated, those who are lost, and bring them into a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And we need to be effective by staying focused on that. And what we do then is every aspect of what First Baptist West is doing should be done by asking, will this reach someone does this have the potential of causing someone to understand their need for Jesus and bring them to that saving grace doesn't mean though that every time we do something someone's going to be saved but everything that we do has that in the back of our mind that we're going to use this maybe it'll maybe it'll be a springboard into something but it's going to bring 
people to Jesus. Listen to me. Even the Immerse Conference that we're having in a couple of weeks, in the back of my mind, when God began to lay that burden on my heart, and they began to put that into the, to the seeds in my mind, and I began to pray, and I began to, to share that vision with, with the staff, and we began to work on these things, in the back of my mind, my question was, will this encourage, and will this be able to get people to where we're going to see someone come to Jesus by this conference? And my friend, listen to me. I believe that the answer is absolutely yes. By this, we will be able to see people come to Jesus. So everything that we do, that should be our goal. That should be our goal. So the second thing is, what is our method? Why do we have this purpose? What, how do we do this? Well, look at verse 12. The Bible tells us, verse 11, that he gave us some prophets, preachers, teachers, evangelists. For what? Look at verse 12. For the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. That's our method, is that we do it by equipping people for ministry. Everything that we do, we teach and we train. And we get people ready so that they can do the ministry that God has given us. So then the question is, if we're training for the ministry... What ministry is it? Is it that we train for youth ministry? Is it that we train for senior adult ministry? Is it we train for uh, children's ministry, preschool ministry, uh, what, uh, prison ministry, uh, whatever it is, uh, reaching out ministry? Is that what we're training for? Absolutely it is because all of those fall under the one idea of ministry and that is the ministry of reconciliation. So if we're talking about training for senior adult ministry, that's still training to teach people how to bring people to Jesus. If we do it through the youth ministry, through the children's ministry, preschool ministry, whatever ministry it is, the outreach ministry, whatever it is, with the intent of that ministry is to go out and to reach people for Jesus. Not to just entertain, not just to make something cute, make something cool. It is to bring someone to Jesus. The Bible tells us, over in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Everything that we do, no matter what level we do it in, senior adult, youth, children's, preschool, uh, prison, whatever it is, that still is that ministry of reconciliation under the guide of that section of ministry of the church. So what, what our method is to train, to prepare, to, if you will, practice. I want to share this with you. Small groups, fellowships, and yes, even this worship service, they're not the purpose of the church, but rather the preparation. So we, we sometimes have in our minds that the purpose of the church is to gather together to worship. No. He did not say that he brought some preachers, teachers, apostles, evangelists for the worship time. He brought them together for the training to edify the church. So what I'm trying to say is that worship is important because worship is a training ground. It's the prep work to go out and do the ministry. That's why he says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, as some do. But come and edify, and especially in those last days, so that we can be trained and we can be encouraged and we can be lifted up so that now we're ready to leave out of here. When we do our small group times, they're there to train you to do the ministry. When we do Sunday night, when we do those Bible studies, they're there to train you to be able to do the ministry. But that's not why we, we don't just do it to do it. That's the prep work to train us to go out and do the real work. And that is the idea of reaching people for Jesus. The one thing I want us to understand this. You can't fulfill the purpose if you miss the preparation. Amen? You can't fulfill the purpose if you're missing the preparation. Case in point, all of you know, or if you don't know, if you're a guest here, if you're just tuning in with us here, I, used, I spent 17 years as a girls basketball coach and a math teacher. Y'all didn't go, woo! A math teacher, yeah. 
All right. But in my coaching time, every single day, every day, starting from the first day that we were allowed to have practice, we began to work hard. Amen, Jay? Yeah, hear her moaning. She remembers. She is probably one of those that came in and said, Coach, are we going to get a day off today? Can we just do some easy? No, we, we worked. We, 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 we trained. Man, we, we did drills over and over and over. We shot and we did different things. We went through <clears throat> what I called scenario uh, scenario practices. What I would do is I'd lay out there and I'd say, okay, here's the situation. We got 10 seconds. We're down here. Here's what we need and we got to make it work. And so we would do situations. We would practice. Now listen, I wanted you to understand something. I realized those practices were not the games. But the game was the goal. Because when we got to the game, I wanted my teams to be able to perform to the best of their abilities. So that when we were there, man, we walked in the gym, we were confident, we were rehearsed, we were ready for any situation that we could possibly think of that could come up. And that when things got rough, maybe we got to the fourth quarter, we weren't going to get blown out of the water because we got panicky. No, I wanted us to be disciplined. I wanted us to be ready. I wanted us to be trained. And when we got into the game, man, we were ready. And my friends, listen to me. The Lord blessed me over those 17 years of coaching with some great athletes, and we got to win a lot of win I got to win a lot of ball games because of them. But my friend, listen to me. I realized, had we not practiced every day, that when it came time for the game, we would literally fall apart. And we couldn't be effective. We would lose a lot more than we won. So I had to understand that in order to do well in the game, we had to practice. Listen to me. For us to do well as the church in this goal of reaching people for Jesus, we cannot neglect the preparation work. And I believe that we are seeing across our nation a decline in baptisms, a decline in the number of people that are being saved, a decline in the number of people that are, is because of the number of people that are not prepping and going to church. Preacher, we don't need to be in church to be a Christian. To be prepared to bring people to Jesus, you better. If you're not interested in bringing people to Jesus, yeah, you, you're right. You're, you're, not going to lose your, you're not going to lose your salvation. Amen. Oh, come on, folks. I should have got a lot of amens here. Amen? Amen. You're not going to lose your salvation. Amen. Salvation is sure and secure. Amen? Amen? So we're not going to lose it, but my friends, you're not going to be effective if you don't prepare. I don't care if that's in basketball I don't care if it's in school I don't care if it's at your job I don't care what it is if you don't put in the prep work you don't reach your goals my friend listen to me our goal is to bring people to Jesus worshiping is part of the preparation Bible study is part of the preparation fellowships are part of the preparation and for us to be effective we better do those and more because we want to see people come to Jesus. This is not our goal. This is preparation. Tonight, when we get together and do those Bible studies, oh, and have will snacks. <laughs> That's not our goal. That's our prep work. When we come together on Wednesday nights, not this Wednesday night because it's spring break, but when we do come together with the Awana, with the student Bible studies, with the men's Bible studies, women's Bible studies. Those are not our goals. That's the prep work. And you're going to only, listen, you're going to be as only good at reaching your goal as you are putting in the preparation. Man, I believe that with all my heart as a coach. I believe that with all my heart as a teacher. I believe that with all my heart as a pastor.
This is not our goal. This is the prep. You can't fulfill the purpose if we miss the preparation. Amen? Got to get on to number three. Number three, our result. Our result. What is the result of doing that? It is edifying or building up the body of Christ. It's edifying or building up. It's, it's strengthening and, 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 and encouraging. It's, it's doing what we do. He says, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, okay? Equipping them for the work, for the edifying of the, holy, of, 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 the whole, of the body of Christ. So we put in the prep work so that we can encourage and strengthen and listen, even add to the body. That's how... The, Listen, do you understand? That's how the body gets stronger, is when, you, when you're lifted up and encouraged. The Holy Spirit is working and busting through. Man, that's part of it. And so it's, it's a, basically a spiritual encouragement and development. It's spiritually encouraging and developing. That's what we're looking at. So what is that? Very quickly, i got two things. One is by evangelism. Man, we build up the body, we encourage the body, we strengthen the body, we add to the body when people come to know Jesus through new believers. Do you know that's the way God intended to build a church? By bringing in new believers? That's how we are to encourage. Listen, I don't know about you, but I, 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 man, when I was watching that video, and I was, I was seeing those people get baptized, I don't know about you, but that's, a, that's the third time I've seen it. I watched it once in the office, watched it in the first service, now I watched it in the second service. Guess what? Man, I got pumped up every time someone got baptized. Whoo, that, that was exciting, amen? Because you know what that meant? That meant the body of Christ had been strengthened and added to by someone because they had received Jesus into their heart and they were making that testimony of salvation because they were following through believer's baptism. Wow. I got pumped with that. I get pumped, man. Some of my favorite times is I get to baptize someone. Whew, that's edifying. That's building up the body of Christ with new believers. But it's also by nurturing, by taking those who are already here, those existing believers, and strengthening them, encouraging them, teaching them, lifting them up, making them stronger, preparing them to step out into this crazy, crazy world and to be able to maintain some semblance of, 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 of even kill. Not being rattled. Man, I, I, I shared with the men on Wednesday night in our men's Bible study. I said, listen, and I wasn't talking about just this, this virus thing going on, I, this situation. I'm talking about every situation. I said, do you understand... That in all this craziness that can go on in this world, the one group of people that should not be torn down and shaken and rattled would be a group of Christians. Because we have a Savior that's in control. Listen, do you understand? There's not a single situation that shocks God. He doesn't go, oh boy, I wasn't expecting that. He knows and he's prepared. He is in control of even this situation in America today. Do you understand? God is in control. Right. Now listen, we got to use sense. Good grief, wash your hands. But amen, you should have been doing that before this. What have you been doing? Amen? Don't cough on anybody. But you should have been doing that before. Don't wipe your nose and then pat somebody. Should have been doing that. Do you know what? That's given by God. Amen. Be considerate. Be cautious. But man, don't get rattled by this. Oh, we got a God that's in control. And somebody, listen to me, somebody has to be under control. Amen somebody's got to keep their head in this situation and other situations. Somebody's got to keep their head, and you know who can do it? We can. By building each other up, by strengthening one another, by encouraging one another, and that's why we prep. That's why we train. That's why we worship. That's why we have Bible studies. That's why we have fellowships. That's why we have all these other things. It's for equipping. 
That's why we're having this Bible conference. It's for equipping. It's for preparation. Because I am convinced with all my heart, our purpose at First Baptist West is to see people saved. Amen? It's to see people saved. So today, I want to ask you, if you're here or if you're, uh, if you're viewing us on the live stream, do you know Jesus as your Savior? You don't need to do anything else if you're not sure that you have Christ as your Savior. Because you are lost and you are separated from God. You have no firm foundation. You have no hope. You have no future apart from that of Jesus Christ. So today I want to encourage you. If you don't know Jesus, would you call on his name this morning? Would you say, God, I, I need you to forgive me of my sin. I need you to come into my heart. And God, I ask you to save me. I, I want to be no longer separated from you, but I want to be brought close to you through Jesus. I want to take on his righteousness as he takes and becomes my sin. My friend, that's what you have to do today. It's very simple. It's a very complex act, but the complexity was provided by God himself. The simplicity is now us just believing. Become a new believer. Strengthen the body. But maybe you're here, maybe you're watching, you say, Pastor, it's been, I know I'm saved. But I, I, I admit, I really admit, I've been neglecting the prep work. I, I've been doing my own thing. I've been living my own life. But today, man, I, I want my goal to see people come to know Jesus through me. Today, I recommit my heart to serving him. Putting in the prep time that it takes for me to be able to see people being affected by my life. Maybe it's that you need to come today and follow in believers' baptism. Maybe it's that you need to come and recommit your life to, to whatever God has been calling you to do. Maybe it is serving in one of our ministries. Maybe it is helping out. Whatever it is, put in the prep so that we can be an effective church. I've told you before, and I close with this, I do not have any thoughts or even burdens to make First Baptist West the biggest church in Lawton. It's not even on my radar. Don't care. What I do care is that I want us to be one of the most effective churches. That's what I care for. Because we have people who are committed to Christ, who love the lost people, who are willing to do whatever it takes to bring them into reconciliation with God. Maybe you say, that needs to be me today, preacher. I need to recommit my heart to that. That we can recommit First Baptist West to that. Today is that day. Would you pray with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you and we thank you for the blessings. We thank you, God, for the opportunity to gather here this morning. And I pray for everyone here as I look over this congregation, Lord, I thank you for them. As I think of those who are watching on this, this live stream, Lord, I, my prayer goes out for them as well. That, Father, your spirit would be settling on everyone. And first and foremost, that every person here and every person watching, Lord, would know that they have a relationship with you through Jesus Christ. God, if they don't, may they call upon your name this morning to receive you into their lives. To become saved, Father. To have a new purpose in life. To have a new meaning in life. Lord, let that, let that take place right now. My friend, if that was you, I want you to pray. God, forgive me. I need you in my heart. Would you come and save me? Thank you for putting Jesus as my sacrifice. Would you, would you pray that? Oh, would you just receive him today. Whether you're here or whether you're watching, would you receive him today? And then I want you to begin to say, Lord, use me now. Use me now. And so if you're here and you know Jesus, or you're watching and you know Jesus, but man, you realize that your heart has been kind of off on other things. Maybe you've been struggling in aspects of your life. Maybe there's parts of your life that you know are not pleasing to God, but man, today you want to turn it over to Him because you want to become effective in His ministry that He's called you to do. Man, would you turn that over to Him today as well? This is part of the preparation, getting ourselves ready for Him. Get ourselves ready. Father, hear our prayers today. 
work in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to ask you to stand. And we'll... I'm Harold Gase, pastor of First Baptist West. I want to thank you for watching our service today and hope that you were able to feel the God's Spirit moving as we were able to here. And I want to always invite you to join us in person. If you're within driving distance, come and join us and we can worship together. But if not, continue to watch us in our live stream service as we will now, over the next few weeks, continue to be preaching on bringing people to Jesus. Our goal is is to make the church aware of the need that people have around us uh, for, for Jesus. And so that our hope is to bring people to that saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you are needing anything that we can help you with, just please call us here at the church office, and we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to visit with you in any way that we can, help you in any way that we can. So we always want to welcome you and be, be a loving church. And remember, at First Baptist West, we're people that love God, love people, and we want to see lives changed.